and as a teacher. Um, and when Greg Ross and I decided to uh, start the Hall of Fame back in 2002, um, one of the biggest things was that we had so many student athletes that had been so important to the history of Country Day um, that had not been recognized. And so back in 2002 was our first class of the Country Day Athletic Hall of Fame. Since that day, we have inducted 79 um, student athletes or coaches. Um, I'm really pleased that we have two Hall of Famers that are going to be making the presentations. Um, so thank you very much to Howard Brownstein and to Melanie Vierling for coming back. Um, that will be speaking here in a second, but they, they are in our Athletic Hall of Fame as well. Lynn, Ashley, and Missy um, have touched my life um, as a coach, as an athletic director, um, and I think you'll hear some great things about them and some stories. Um, as, as Greg and I always talk about who's going to make the presentations, it was like, I really don't want to make any of these presentations this year because literally, um, like I said, the three of them impacted my life in a, in a big way. Um, Tony Picacci is not here. Um, he is off in uh, New York City um, doing a headmaster uh, conference, uh, but he wanted to, me to read these following remarks. I wish I could be with you for tonight's induction ceremony, honoring Joe, Jason, Ashley, Missy, and Lynn, but know the wonderful crowd gathered tonight will create a special evening for our honorees. Country Day has always placed tremendous value on the lessons students learn through athletics. Playing sports can be as important as time spent in the classroom. That's because athletics help develop an array of life skills, discipline, leadership, teamwork, tenacity, and perhaps the most importantly, character. Through sports, our students learn to win with humility and lose with dignity although I hope they don't lose often. <laughs> We've long seen the correlation between students who strive to be the best on the playing fields and those who find success in life. And tonight's inductees are sterling examples of scholar-athletes whose athletic prowess at Country Day was persistent in their careers to come. Our honorees continue to distinguish themselves in all they undertake. In life, as in sports, we continue to set a bar, a bar that today's students aspire to reach. So thank you for setting it high. Congratulations, Joe, Jason, Ashley, Missy, and Lynn. Again, I wish I could be with you to celebrate your accomplishments, but know your family and many friends and former coaches, as well as stories of your glory days at Country Day, will create a special and a well-deserved evening to honor your contributions on behalf of a very grateful alma mater. Thank you and enjoy the festivities. So with that, I would like to bring up Mark Warner of the class of 1976, um, who is going to in introduce Joe King. Mark? Thank you, Bert. We appreciate that and we appreciate you establishing it. The Hall of Fame. It means a lot. Uh, anyway, I guess it's on Wayne's World where he says I'm not worthy. Well, I'm not worthy to introduce Joe Kenny. Joe Kenny meant so much for a football team. He was the Apollo Creed before there was an Apollo Creed. <laughs> Joe was calm, cool, collected and a little cocky. Nowadays, my son Keen would say simply that he had swag. <laughs> he totally had swag. Specifically, Joe was the leading scorer in Cincinnati in the second, in one year, and the second leading scorer. The following year, both seasons, he rushed for over a thousand yards. He got a full scholarship to the University of Virginia. He played there and then finished up at the University of Cincinnati, playing for them. He was also outstanding in track. He went to the state every year 
plays, 100, 220, um, 880 relay. Um, he was smoking. He gave me a compliment yesterday and said, and I don't believe this, I think his memory is a little bit awry, but he said that, uh, he said when he broke his track record, he said I was breathing down his neck. <laughs> so, Joe, it must have been some other dude. That's all it was. But anyway, I'm proud to introduce him. But more importantly, Coach Dudley Hoffman, one of the finest coaches anywhere, um, is going to come up and say a few more words. Thank you. afternoon and he showed up for our first football practice and I remember going up to him I said what, what position do you play he said I'm a running back I said no you're not a running back until I tell you that you're a running back. <laughs> and uh, he said what do you mean I said well there's some drills we'll put you through and if you pass those drills and the coaches say, okay, then you're running back. He said, what, what drill are you talking about? I said, well, <clears throat> first of all, we're going to test your straightaway speed. And then <clears throat> we're going to have you run through the dummies and try to knock you down and see what your burst is when you come out. And then we're going to see how agile you are. You've got to master the sidestep and come out of that with full speed. And he said, well, I don't know if I want to play or not. <laughs> I said, yeah, you'll, you'll play and you're, and you're going to be good. And I can tell you he was, he was really good, folks. This, this kid was a natural born running back. He had all the moves. He was tough. Uh, I can only remember him getting uh, bruised or, uh, or hurt one time, and that's when we went out to play Ross High School, and I think he got bruised up a little bit. Did you play the next game, Joe? Yes, sir. He did? Did he? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Well, I thought he was going to die that day. I didn't think he was going to die. Play the next game. But anyway, I remember Joe, the hallmark of Joe Kenny as a football player was we had a game scheduled with Clinton Massey, a big county school. And uh, of course, they come out on the field with 50 or 60 players and bring their band and all that. And we show up with like 30 players. And on top of that, it started snowing while we were getting dressed. And so we were going to play at Indian Hill, their stadium. It started snowing. We turned the lights on. We decided to go ahead and play. Ref said, okay, let's play. So it ultimately snowed probably six to eight, maybe, maybe ten inches of snow during the game. And I can remember vividly, Joe ran the ball every single play. <laughs> every single play. Did not complain one time and 
scored the only touchdown, and I think we beat them six to nothing, Joe, or seven to nothing, or, or something like that. But it was one of the greatest feats I've ever seen in the world. Slogging in the snow. And I must say our offensive line got some credit that night too because it was, it was nasty and it was cold. And uh, we came out of there with a victory. And that was Joe Kenny's victory, folks. That was his victory because he did it. Now, Joe, if you're done eating, and I remember you were a big eater. <laughs> When, when we went on the road, Joe made sure he had plenty to eat. Mm -hmm. Joe, if you'll come up, I've got something to present to you. Okay? something about this and I just like I'm thinking now so humbling I thanked him but um well I really don't know what to say um, other than all of you all are Hall of Fame uh, especially coach and um, coach Strauss and um, Steve Wilhelm and Russell and Hunter Clawson and Tom Montgomery and Ronald Boykin mm -hmm. and uh, Wayne Washington and um, <laughs> Frank Rommel. Bob Weldon. Obviously, learned uh, Addison Lemire, giving a lot of encouragement when I was a kid, came here. And, and they let, um, um, beside realizing nobody has to block for you. And, uh, you know, you, you're going to be grateful anytime, especially in sports or in life, that anybody blocks for your works with you. Um, wow, I, just, I really don't know what to say. This is unbelievable, uh, beautiful, and I'm proud of all of you. I'm delighted all of you came. Thank you very much. And um, I hope we get to see all of you and talk to you. Love you all dearly. Uh, Mark Warner, especially, thank you very much for pushing me all the way through the night. Um, and uh, thank you again. Well, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Coach at Colgate, and she also coached at Kenyon. 
While she was at Kenyon, she took the team to the NCAA finals for Division III, which is no small achievement. Lynn coached, at 20, Lynn coached for 21 years at Country Day, which is hard to believe because she still looks 21. I'm not great at math, so I'm not sure how all that worked out. But we were great for the 21 years we had it here. Um, Lynn had the reputation of being a fair but a tough coach. She liked to emphasize fitness. So the first day of every season when all the girls had to show up, she would make everybody go out and run the mile. Didn't matter what they'd done this summer, if they owned a pair of tennis, she had to go out and run the mile which was a little bit of a problem for some girls because it typically started the first day in August when it was 98 and 98% humidity. Not always a fan favorite. <laughs> Lynn taught strokes, strategy, and the love of the game. Lynn valued sportsmanship, team before self, and effort. When talking with Hirsch about tonight and, and what she expected, she said, you know what I would say about Lynn? She said, this is the truth. She said, Lynn represents everything you would want in a country day coach. She has high integrity. She, <clears throat> she values her students. She said she related to the girls. She earned their respect. And what else she did with the girls? She could take the best player and make them better. And she could take the other <coughs> players and help them to achieve their full potential. Please welcome me in joining my friend, Lynn. taught me sportsmanship and respect on the court. Ugh, I hate to do this. <laughs> and my college coach, Scott Toki, taught me how to compete and how to win. Sydney uh, was also the first to suggest I start coaching. And Scott gave me the opportunity to coach at the college level at Colgate. And then he supported my decision to move back to Cincinnati and to coach at Country Day while I was coaching with him at uh, Kenya. So they both showed me how to coach how to treat players, and how to behave on and off the court. I had a very supportive administration in Hirsch and Greg. Um, if I asked for a case of balls, they were out in the shed that afternoon. Uh, if there was a hole behind the court, Hirsch was out there herself filling the hole. <laughs> One time I showed up to practice, and there were cracks in the court, and she is on her knees filling the cracks on the court. Uh, anything I needed, she was right there. And same with Greg. If I needed something for our invitational, he would get it done. If I needed the kids to be excused for class, he would take care of all that. And so it, that kind of support really made it incredibly easy for me to concentrate on the team. So thank you both very much for that. I had fantastic JV coaches. Uh, I had Marty off for about seven years. I had Chrissy Whalen, my sister Lisa Hewitt, who was here. I had Cindy Barton, uh, who introduced me tonight, uh, Amy Lutz, and I had two former players come back, which was so much fun, Annie Barrett and Kyle Scully. Uh, without these amazing women, I would not have, I would have been unable to coach as well. They were supportive, organized, fun, athletic, and willing to do anything for the kids. I had really a fantastic parental support while I was at Country Day, and actually some more parents are back there, which is awesome. Um, day one of practice, we would discuss the rules, the all-important snack list, uh, <laughs> attendance and responsibility, and I always felt that the girls were now in high school and that they needed to start accepting responsibilities. If they had a problem, I wanted them to come to the coaching staff and not rely on their parents to solve their issue. Um, I know that this was really difficult for some of the parents. That they didn't always have the right information about where a match was, for example. But I found that after that initial confusion, a situation such as this never reoccurred as the student athlete became a better communicator with their parent and with the coaches. Uh, I had parents who came to every match, <laughs> two of them were right there. Uh, parents ran out to get snacks if someone forgot them, and they let us do our jobs without comment. 
Although the parents were a big support for the team, the girls learned to rely on themselves and one another. I've always been so impressed with all my student athletes and their parents. Many have gone on to become my friends. And uh, finally, as I just said, I had great student athletes. We had as many as 34 one year and as few as 14 another year and everything in between. 34 people on five courts, and Cindy said she wasn't good at math, do the math. Uh, it was really difficult, but the girls made it work. 14 was just as tough as every girl had to play both JV and varsity, and we could have no injuries, no sickness, nothing. Um, all these girls wanted was to learn. They demonstrated sportsmanship and etiquette, making school and myself look great. Um, although I had many successes going to state, the state tournament in singles and doubles, fellow honoree Ashley Baker was one of my earliest successes. Uh, I am most proud of the small sports. The girl we taught to hold a racket her freshman year, and then she played, uh, she played for me on the varsity her senior year, and then she, she'd never played before, and then she wanted to play club tennis in college. I also had a girl who was highly successful academically here, um, but she had never been given the chance to succeed ac uh, ac athletically, sorry. Uh, she went on to become our team captain and three singles player her senior year. And then another special occurrence was when one of my players received the Greater Cincinnati Tennis Coaches Association Award for Sportsmanship. This award was voted on by all the coaches in the city and it was a great honor. And although I had actually nothing to do with her receiving this uh, award, uh, she, she's just a great person and a phenomenal sportswoman. Um, this is just a fantastic uh, representation of Country Day and all that it embodies and all that we strive for in our program. I had many athletic successes in the MVC, local tournaments, and state tournaments, but I'm both proud of the small, small successes and of the coaches teaching these kids how to play a sport we love and the etiquette involved in our sport. I truly enjoyed coaching here. The staff was great, the groundskeepers accommodating, and the faculty supportive and flexible. Going up to Columbus to state or playing at the ATP Linder Center was always such fun and a great experience for the girls. However, I love the team-oriented aspects of the sport. Team day, team practices, close matches where all the girls supported one another. All my JV coaches were my friends. Van rides, stopping for ice cream after matches, and how much fun the kids had at the banquet during our DVD presentation, even though they complained the entire year about me taking pictures of them. <laughs> The great kids themselves, these are what made these years so, so special. So thank you all for this wonderful honor and fantastic opportunity to do what I love. The next person I'd like to bring to the podium, Hall of Famer, Howard Brown Sr. At this time, I'd like to introduce Jason Smith, class of 1992, as he enters the Country Day Hall of Fame. I could spend my few minutes I have reviewing all of Jason's stats, but that really wouldn't let you know who Jason was as a student athlete at Country Day. With a big push from his mother and director of admissions, Jill Thiesen, Jason entered Country Day as a freshman in 1988. As a talented basketball player, he immediately became a big part of a very good senior-laden team, which went on to win the first district championship in school history. Jason reaped all the benefits of playing alongside four wonderful seniors, Cass Hopkins, Craig Palmer, Michael Dunn, and Michael Hill. That first year certainly helped Jason to become the fantastic teammate and leader that he was during the next three years of varsity play. At some point in Jason's sophomore year, we started winning league games and didn't lose another one for five years. And although Jason, his time had passed here um, for the last two years of the streak, he did set the tone for our teams and showed all of our players how to win. 
Students and parents came to watch Jason block shots and put down monstrous dunks. What most didn't realize was how hard Jason worked at the game to get such a, to a high level of play. Jason only knew one speed of practice, and that was all out. I loved watching and coaching Jason, especially in practice, where he was really pushed by his competitive teammates. Trust me, our practices, led by the two-headed Zimmerman monster who was sitting in the back, <laughs> weren't for the faint of heart. By his senior year, Jason was the dominant player in our area, and at the end of the year, he won many awards, including Player of the Year by both city papers and being named to the All-State team. Since I started coaching here in 1985, Jason is the only male to receive and play on a Division I basketball scholarship. Which leads me to a story about Jason. In March of 92, we played for the regional championship at Wright State University in Dayton. When we arrived at the game, coach. Yeah, Jason gave me some bad news. As he said, Coach, I forgot my shoes. Well, that's really no big deal because everybody wears basketball shoes, but when you wear size 17, <laughs> luckily for us, Jason was being pursued heavily by the Wright State basketball coach who happened to be at the game to watch Jason, of course. Wow. And he went through his back supplies. He didn't even have a current player that needed a 17. So he went through his back supplies and was able to find a pair that Jason could wear. So there he was wearing bright green shirt, bright green shoes with his blue uniform. But to this day, I don't know about the legality of what Coach did, but he saved us and Jason sub subsequently signed to play at Wright State. I mentioned earlier how hard Jason worked at basketball. From the first legal day of open gym, which was usually the Tuesday after Labor Day, the boys would spend almost every day in the gym, especially the year before, before Jason's senior year. Jim Wright was our athletic director, and he was wonderful to us that year. He said that we had something special, and so he made the gym space available for us. Of course, he wasn't real happy when I went to him just before the first game and told him that I needed new basketballs. A couple of months of use on our old tartan floor, and I'm sure people from 75 remember what that would do to the basketballs. At that time, the boys were really close, and when not in the gym, they spent their time hanging out at the Zimmerman house, which was just a short walk from the school. If they had open gym early or practice early, they'd come over afterwards, and if we had a late practice time, they'd spend their afternoons there. Needless to say, they ate and ate and ate the family out of house and home, but James and David's mother, Allison, would just bring in more food. Allison became a second mother to the boys, and after the season at the banquet, of course, at the Zimmerman house, I presented Jason the Most Valuable Player Award. But, it, of course, it really should have gone to James and David's mom, as he <laughs> certainly wouldn't have been in the state finals without her. One last thing about Jason, and perhaps most important, is what he was like off the floor. As the biggest kid in school, Jason could have been a real bully. Instead, he was just the opposite. He was a gentle giant, polite and nice to everybody. I loved watching Jason in the cafeteria or any time he interacted with the little kids. He was the kindest, most loving guy around, and he was the same to all of our high school students and adults that he came into contact with. Of course, his mother deserves all the credit for that, as she's responsible for the kind of young man that Jason was when he was at Country Day. I'd like to now present Jason Smith for the Cincinnati Country Day Hall of Fame. He is certainly well deserving. <laughs> Gracias.
was not going to get emotional, but I will also deal with it. Uh, I want to begin by saying uh, thank you and, and, and congratulations to all the other inductees. I got your names right here. Uh, Joe, Lynn, uh, Ashley, and Missy. Uh, more importantly, I want to say thank you to the committee, all those involved with establishing this Hall of Fame committee and inviting myself. Then you see Jamie and Dave back there. See, my family knows me, so they know this is what I do. So, <laughs> Coach touched on a lot of good memories. A lot of things that I've forgotten about. When he talked about uh, me coming here and uh, my mother, there were a lot of sacrifices that had to be made. <laughs> Single mom. She worked a lot of hours. She would let me use her car to drive here while she caught the bus. Summers, rain, snow, it didn't matter. I would drive her car here so I could come to school here. And she stayed at the bus stop. That's one of the sacrifices that she made for me. Perhaps one of the biggest. And uh, I really started this as soon as I walked in that door and I saw Joe Thiesing. Uh, this area. I didn't just, I didn't know about Cincinnati Country Day when, before I came here, to be quite honest with you. All I knew about was Summer Country Day. The year prior to coming to the school, I was uh, eighth grader at Cape, okay? Those who remember Cape, it was an acronym, C period, A period, P period, E period, right? A really great academic institution, the Cincinnati Academy of Physical <laughs> Education, right? Great athletic program, okay? Required to take gym twice a day, you know, <laughs> you know my cousin Reese, <laughs> right there. She and I went there. We had another cousin there. Uh, we went there together. Now, you might laugh at the fact that it is a school that stressed physical education, but it was a school that changed my life in terms of um, having to grow up uh, a little bit quicker. We were catching the bus there. Um, she and I, I think that was probably the second time she and I attended school together. And it taught me a lot now. Yes, physically, yeah, you know, the, the, the physical education part of it was good. But what it did for me was I met two people there that really helped me out along the way. There was my first team basketball coach, okay? When I say team, school team. Before that, I had played in community leagues. Uh, coach Patrick, okay? Coach Patrick took a liking to me. Obviously, if you're 13, 6'2", somebody's going to like you, right? So, you're on the basketball team, let's go for it. And ended up playing with a, a, a great group of guys. I mean, some of us are still friends today. Rob Mosley, uh, Clarence Clark, who had played Little League with me, et cetera, et cetera. So, we had a really good team. Well, what that did for me was it got me some recognition, okay? At that moment, that was, you know, um, I was a good eighth grader. I got invited to play in the summer league with prominent high school basketball players. Now here's where it gets interesting. Okay, a lot of those guys went to a school called Woodward. Everybody's familiar with Woodward, okay? Woodward is where my aunt went. In 87, they had probably, in my opinion, and I'm a big high school basketball fan, but Woodward had probably one of the best uh, basketball programs in one state by a lot. Uh, and I had an opportunity to not only play along with them, but I got a chance to know a lot of those guys. And one of those guys was their coach, Coach Miller who had already told me, okay, after you leave Cape, you're gonna to come to Woodward. And that was my plan, to go to Woodward as a freshman, to hopefully win state like they did. Somehow, someway, in one of these summer leagues, someone approaches my mother about Cincinnati Country Day. So my mother comes to tell me about this opportunity. Like, what, what, what in the world is Cincinnati a country day? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> you know, is it really like that every day? You know, country day. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to Wilbur, right? Wilbur is where I plan to go. I want to win the state championship. I want to be just like those guys, right? And so, mom's telling me I need you to go uh, to this school. I want you to at least go visit. So I came here to visit, and then I'll never forget it. Uh, we came here, we met up in uh, Joe Thiesing's office, the old administration director. Um, Joe asked me questions. Of course, he wants to get an idea for feel for my academic, you know, Prowess, right? None. 
didn't quite know any of what he was putting in front of me. I remember uh, one of the tests was Mr. Tumalo, your math teacher, he, he gave me this sheet and I said, I want you to solve some of these questions. I'm like, I got a question for you. Why are these letters next to these numbers? <laughs> what am I doing? What exactly am I doing? Let's not waste each other's time here, okay? I fulfilled my portion. I came to visit. Therefore, it's time for me to get to Woodward. I got to go. You know? <laughs> so then I go back. And sure enough, uh, I end up going to Woodward. Um, so I go to Woodward, and my mom knows me. There's only a few men. I grew up in a single parent home, like I said. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But uh, growing up as a Little League in, in Little League ball, uh, there was one coach, uh, like a father figure to me. He since passed on, but she actually had him call me out the blue. Okay, I haven't played Little League ball in a couple of years. My mom had been trying, trying. I need you to go. And it was the first week it's gone by in school. The second week is coming up. I'm still at school at Woodward. And she had him call me, Keith Smith. Great man. Uh, he and his wife, his two sons, still friends with today, Keith Smith Jr., Camille, and Lamont. Um, played with them. Keith called me, and it didn't take long for me to at least consider what my mom had been working hard to try to get me to do. So here I am. I came to Cincinnati Country Day, okay? Coming in here, it was an adjustment, right? The tall guy here. I'm living in Bond Hill, right? And so I come to school here, and now it's time for me to start becoming acclimated to what exactly it is I'm supposed to do here in these classrooms. And it was a lot of work, okay, a lot of work. But there was not one day where I felt out of place. All right, Coach Brownstein was not just a basketball coach, okay? You gotta forgive me, I've been away from this school for a while, so I'm just having a lot of memories that I've forgotten about. All these guys, Coach Brownstein, uh, every day, you know, in and out of class, just in my ear all the time, okay? He, he saw my shortcomings. I don't care what it was. I could not hide from him, right? The school was much smaller than it was, and I thought I found every hiding spot. But I knew I didn't turn in any homework. I cut the corner. You're better than that. You know, it was always, <laughs> all the time. Get it in the air, you know. And that was just the out of school part of it, you know, out of the classroom. <laughs> On the court, it was a whole different dynamic. Uh, uh, he along with Coach Hillary, Coach Montgomery, uh, a lot of great coaches, and that's just the basketball side of things, okay? And then the opportunity to be here with great classmates. I uh, had an opportunity to meet Coach Dunn. Um, Mike Hill lived on my street, actually. Uh, and so he was the one that really was the first contact, student contact that I ever had here. And he uh, really, he used to bring me to school. And he introduced me to Coach Dunn. And every time I look at Coach Dunn, I see his wife, my old English teacher, Mrs. Dunn. I know I still owe her homework to this day. <laughs> I saw her when we came back to the other day. Oh my God, it's I know. the most intimidating eyes I've ever had in my class, ever, 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 ever. And I mean, I had her my freshman, this is 30 years ago. Okay? I use your example for everything. I talk to people and I remember you, but it, this is awesome. Uh, uh, but the bottom line is, you know, everything, my last name is Smith, okay? but. I'm a Bell by nature, okay? I was raised in the Bell household. My cousin and I, my sister, uh, we have three other cousins, a really tight unit. That's just part of our village. Uh, everybody who's here, okay, has had an impact since coming up, growing up. Um, I've got close family friends here. Miss Mary Ann, my cousin Larry, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. These are people who have been around since I was a kid, and they supported me um, and everything. No matter what, and that's special to me, you know. There's one guy here, uh, first person I ever met outside of Mike. When I came here, I went to a football practice, and uh, <laughs> to this day, I mean, <laughs> the first thing he said to me is the same thing he says to me every day. I said, uh, "My name is Jason. What's your name? I'm D. <laughs> What's up, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> If you talk to Dave now, it's the same thing. And he and I joke, we've been friends for a while. He's been like an older brother to me. Uh, he's, he's always been, he's my closest friend um, all throughout life. He and I, it's just been a great friendship. And I'm so honored to have met him along with others. Uh, all three of his children, my godchildren, little D, 
uh, little Dave, I'm sorry, DR, okay, just to grab the microphone whenever you want to at a graduation, that guy. Uh, Taylor, Just, Justine, all have attended this school, so it's an honor to have them uh, um, come to the same school that I went to. Um, and his father and his beautiful wife, Shanika. Uh, my nieces, my, me and Maya. It's just good to be represented. See, our family, we've, we've always believed in athletics. I grew up primarily in a family full of women, right? So you would expect us to really not stress athletics. Come to a bell Thanksgiving, come to any bell gathering. After we eat, we're going to relay race. So okay? there was a relay race happening somewhere. It might be on our street, your street, it's going to be on anybody's street. If we get together, we're going to do something. Uh, my mother was a great athlete. Uh, she, she would work, you know, long hours. She was at Delta for 35 years. Downtown at the old atrium building was one of the places that she worked at. Um, so she'd work her hours, she'd catch the bus back. If she had softball practice, we would go to softball practice. Okay. As a father now, and I've got my wife here, of course, you know, we, we're, we're team, we're doing this as a team, raising our two daughters. She was doing this by herself. She carved out enough time for herself to enjoy things, and she enjoyed sports. She's a great softball player, great volleyball player. Uh, we attended all of her games. Through that, I learned how to be a good teammate. I learned what leadership was about. I learned what it meant to respect the person next to and respect your opponent. She taught me that. She taught me, among other things, uh, the value of working hard. Uh, you cannot accomplish anything close to what she's accomplished unless you have good work ethic. You don't just get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, be ready to leave by 5.45, catch a bus downtown, work overtime, come back, catch a bus, then make sure that I can get to practice, get home, get me fed, and then have time to come to my games. There was, I can only count maybe a handful of games with the schedule like that that she has missed. And if she couldn't make a game, she always made sure that she sent someone. <sighs> to come watch me play. So, I want to say to my village, my family, everyone here, the faculty, thank you so much for this honor. I want to finish by talking about the guys that I played alongside with. Coach Brownstein was not lying when he talked about the Zimmerman household. Uh, we call it Zenmart. I mean, pretty much because <laughs> we had it all there. Uh, they opened their homes to us, but we didn't think about that. I mean, guys I played alongside with, and these guys were awesome. And I play, I've had many teams throughout my lifetime, and I've been very blessed and fortunate. Uh, and I can name them all right now. And I'm talking freshman year all the way up to my senior year. Um, freshman year, I came in with Mike Hill, Cass Hopkins, okay, Craig Palmer. I mean, these are guys that just awesome, and I was on that team. So here it is, me wanting to do something at another school, but being where I needed to be and playing along good guys there, here, okay? That was really an honor for me to do that. Trey Turner, junior years, uh, a lot of great players. My favorite team, obviously, my final four guys. Um, we worked hard every year to get to where we wanted to be. We didn't quite win it, but who cares? I won it by playing alongside them. Uh, Dave and James, who are here, John Hudson, Taylor Medford, I mean, John, Jimmy, <laughs> to, uh, Jamel, I don't, I don't want to miss anybody, Matt, uh, let's see, Cass, uh, Mabry, um, man, I'm just very honored to be able to sit up here on behalf of them. That's a Hall of Fame team. This is a Hall of Fame school. I had Hall of Fame moments, and I thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you very much. have not been the athletic director the last couple years, so this might not be the first, but it is a thrill to have uh, Ray Baker introduce his daughter, Ashley. Ray? Well, Ashley and 
and I were sitting around last night talking about some stories, and did keep reading me Kleenexes that wiped my eyes up because we were laughing so hard. But uh, a funny little story, I actually had this little puppy, and it died, and her mom and I felt so bad that we bought her an identical puppy. And when we gave it to her, it really made her mad. She says, what am I going to do with two dead dogs? <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> They asked me to tell them a couple of my favorite stories, and I have one that was really a favorite story of mine. It was a basketball season. I, I was lucky enough to be able to keep the book, and we were at CHCA. And the basketball team, Country Day and CHC, had shared the MVC title the year before. And it was a home game at, at uh, CHCA. And the announcer said, and welcome the CHCA, I don't even know what their, their mascot is, the MVC champions last year. And I looked at the coach, he was standing there, and I said, you know, I don't understand. I thought we were co-champions. He says, it's my house. So I said, all right. So the game went on, and there was probably, I don't know, 15 seconds left. Country Day had just scored, and the CHC coach is yelling, foul somebody, foul somebody, foul somebody. So they fouled somebody. But is that you, Missy? <laughs> no. But they were trying to get somebody fouled. You were in the part of the game. Yeah. And they, they, they fell, actually. And the coach was yelling, not her, not her. So they called a timeout. Their country days ahead by two. So they put her on ice. She went down and made both baskets. And uh, Mary Lamontia just said, back up, let them have their uh, four point shot. So that really made me, that was a proud moment for me. And just bringing up speed, I actually uh, went on to DePaul University where she played tennis. Um, she decided that she wanted to move where she wanted to live and then find a job. So she moved to Charleston, South Carolina, taught tennis a couple of years down there at the uh, Wild Dunes on the Isle of Palm and got her master's degree from the College of Charleston. So she's been down how long? 12 years. So and she's currently a financial advisor with well, Wells Fargo Advisors. So my pleasure to introduce my daughter, Ashley. as Lynn was giving her speech. I completely forgot about that first day of practice, and it is true, she made you run a mile. <laughs> and as I also have to laugh about that, I was reminiscing with my dad last night. I always hated the days that the middle school tennis team had a match, because every single rack got thrown in the back of the assistant coach's car, and we had to run to Camargo Country Club, have practice, and run back. <laughs> and Lynn was the one leading the pack up Camargo Road. Those were terrible days for me. <laughs> but <laughs> they, I enjoyed them. Um, Lynn was a wonderful coach. There's a couple of you guys in here. I had the pleasure of, Hirsch was softball, I believe, my senior year. Um, and it was a great time. I had very many coaches. I played a couple different sports. I played basketball, tennis, and softball. So I kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything. And um, one of the funniest stories I remember having was Coach Hillary was my softball coach. He was there three to four years. His daughter, Hillary, or Meredith, excuse me, was one of my, oh, she's probably one of the best softball players I ever played with. She was a pitcher on the team. And I remember Coach Hillary came to me, she was two years older than me, so she graduated in my sophomore year. Coach Hillary came to me with a bucket of balls and said, you know what you're doing this summer? I said, I have no idea. He says, you're learning how to pitch. Hillary's graduating, or Meredith's graduating. No idea what I was doing. So, <laughs> I spent basically the rest of the summer learning how to pitch a softball. And somehow I figured it out. Um, not quite sure. I do have to go back to Lynn, and I'm going to put you on the spot here. <laughs> we were playing in the um, state tennis tournament. We were playing at um, Ohio State. It was probably about as cold as outside right now. Um, snowing. And Lynn looked at my de uh, doubles partner, Jenna Tysa, and said, go find a tennis court to warm up on. We looked around. There was not a single tennis court open, except for one that had no net on it. Jenna and I were over there, back and forth, hitting the ball, trying to warm up for this state tennis uh, match. We did it. And uh, it was a great year. Jenna and I got third. Um, and it was quite an experience. 
It's a little bit different than the 70 degree weather I'm used to now, in Charleston. I'm, <laughs> I'm not quite used to that. But I do want to say thank you for um, everyone who's come out tonight and all of my fellow um, inductees. I want to thank my parents. They were those crazy parents that came to every single match game. You, you better believe that they were there or they're finding a way to get me there. Um, uh, my dad was a bookkeeper at every single basketball game, I think from seventh grade through senior year. Um, and then he actually joined the Athletic Boosters and was able to get a lot of the program started here at Country Day, and I know that was a wonderful then. And um, thanks for all the coaches that are here in this room, and um, I appreciate everything. And thank you very much. <laughs>
you know, I was a senior in college at UGA. I mean, flying to Georgia every weekend, Friday games and Sunday games, like the commitment was real. Um, so I just want to tell my parents, thank you so much. I want to thank my aunt and uncle for being here. They have been here the entire time, the entire way. And I just appreciate the love that you guys have for me. I want to thank Dan Vollmer. If any of you guys know these two, I mean, he's been in our life like forever, um, which I'm really grateful to have you there as well. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Thank you again. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of this elite uh, community. And uh, with that, I will be finished. So thank you. <laughs> everyone who's come out tonight. Um, it is such an amazing class. Um, we now have uh, 84 of um, some amazing coaches and athletes that represent the Country Day Athletic Hall of Fame. Um, we'd like to invite, if we could have all the five inductees um, come to the stage so we can do a group picture. Um, and then we would invite you over to watch Coach Ross's uh, boys basketball team as they battle Seven Hills in our new Leonard Family Athletic Center. Um, up in the Hall of Fame gallery, uh, there will be uh, dessert and coffee. So thanks again for coming, um, and go Country Dance.